Hello. Today we're going to talk about the divisions and parts of the nervous system. Before you start, um, if you're doing this for one of Ms. Rose's classes, make sure you have a copy of your notes um, and something to color with. Let's get going. There are two parts to the central nervous system. The first division is the central nervous system, and the second division is the peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system is abbreviated CNS, and it relays messages, processes information, and analyzes that information. The two major parts of the central nervous system are the brain and spinal cord. So in short, what the central nervous system does is when, you, when your body receives information, let's say you feel your hand touches a desk, the neurons in your central nervous system relay that information um, through the spinal cord to the brain where your brain processes the information and analyzes, ah, I know what that feeling is. That's the desk under my fingers. Let's spend a little bit of time talking about the parts of a brain. The first part of the brain that you need to know about is the cerebrum. The cerebrum is the largest portion of the brain, and it's a part that's very, very wrinkly. The wrinkles have an important function in anatomy. And what the function is, is that the wrinkles increase the surface area. So something that's wrinkled has more area to it than something that's flat. In that increased area, you can fit more neurons. So in other words, your brain can hold more neurons because it's wrinkled than it could if it was flat. What the cerebrum does is it contains areas of higher reasoning. So anytime you find yourself thinking about something, like let's say you're learning about math, that would be using your cerebrum. Um, if you're planning what to do tomorrow, that would be using your cerebrum. Planning is a higher level of reasoning. Um, if you look at an object on your desk, when your, your cerebrum is a part of your brain that analyzes the information that you're receiving from your eyes and determine what the object is. The second part of the brain that we need to learn about is the cerebellum. Now the cerebellum is located at the back of the skull. If you place your hand behind your head where your, your, brain, st where your brain, <laughs> where your skull starts to curve into your neck, that's where your cerebellum is at. And what the cerebellum does is it coordinates and balances muscle movement. Put your hand straight out for a second. If you look at your hand, you're able to hold your arm straight out in front of you without your arm bouncing up and down or shaking or jiggling. This is pretty amazing when you consider the number of muscles in your shoulder and upper arms, forearms, fingers, and hands that all need to be perfectly coordinated with each other. And the cerebellum is the part of your brain that does that. Now grab something to color with because we're going to look at where these parts are on a diagram of the brain. So we have two different brains here. The brain at top um, here is an example of a brain that what it looks like if you just took off half of the skull. Okay, so you're seeing the outside of the brain in this one. The one down below here is what we call a cross section. In other words, this is if you cut the brain in half down the middle. As you can see, there's a portion here in the center that you can see in the cross section that you cannot see up in this top one. So the first one that we need to, this first section that we need to be able to identify is the cerebrum. And the cerebrum is the section of the brain, the largest section. It has all the wrinkles, and it's the first section underneath the top of the skull. So I've just outlined the cerebrum in blue, and now I'm just going to kind of doodle in here. This whole area is the cerebrum. Remember, the wrinkles help increase the surface area. On the side view, it's a little more complicated, but if you start right under the skull and outline everything you find, this is still all part of the cerebrum. Okay, and this is the part of your brain that helps you do higher processing skills like math, talking, planning, um, and also deals with your visual or your sensory information, so figuring out what you're seeing, what you're touching. 
so the next part that we need to learn is the cerebellum. And the cerebellum, if you can find your cerebrum, located at the back of the skull, below the cerebrum, is the cerebellum. This area here is the cerebellum. Remember that the cerebellum balances your muscle movements. In the half, um, the cross section of the skull, you look under the cerebrum, and this part that looks like a tree with a circle around it, that is your cerebellum. Okay, so by this point you should be able to, on a diagram, identify the cerebrum and the cerebellum. There's one more part of the brain, we need, or three more parts of the brain we need to learn about. So let's talk about the spinal cord next. That's okay, so the brainstem is the part of the brain that connects the spinal cord in the brain. And what it does is it's it controls the, your important involuntary bodily actions. For example, your blood pressure, your heart rate, your breathing, and your ability to swallow. Now, you can control some of these. For example, you can choose to take a deep breath. That's voluntary. But when you're asleep, or you're just sitting in your desk and you're not thinking about it, the brainstem is the part of your brain that controls your ability to breathe. This is the oldest part of the brain, um, and the part of the brain that is required for life. Heading back over to the notes, let's take a look at where the brain stem is at. The brain stem is located at the bottom of the brain, and I'm going to change this over to green, um, if it'll let me. Okay, there we go. So we need to find the brainstem. And the brainstem is the area located immediately below the cerebellum and below the cerebrum. Okay, so I've outlined the brainstem in green. This is all the brainstem. On the cross section of the brain, um, it's located, I would just start at the spinal cord in front of the cerebellum and down by the neck. So this is also part of the brainstem. Okay, we have two parts left of the brain. And these are both part of what's called the diencephalon. Um, the thalamus is a section in the middle of your brain and it takes the information from your spinal cord, from your body, and relays the information to the correct section of the brain. So you can think of the thalamus as being a relay station. It takes information from, um, let's say it's taking information it gets from your eyes and it's routing it to the optic lobe. It takes the information from your hands and routes that to the correct part of the brain. The last part is your hypothalamus. Hypo means below. So this is a section immediately below your thalamus. And this is the control center for hunger, thirst, fatigue. Um, and other basic bodily needs. So your hypothalamus takes the information, say, from your stomach, um, and when it realizes that your stomach is giving off certain chemicals, it will tell your body, it will tell your cerebrum especially, that you're hungry or thirsty or tired. So let's head back to the notes to take a look at where the hypothalamus and the thalamus are. So let's start first with the thalamus. And the thalamus can be a little tricky to locate, but I'm sure you guys will be able to do it. Okay, so we, on, we can't see it on here. It's located in the middle of the brain. So on this one, you first find your cerebrum, okay, right in here. Then there's kind of this ram's horn shape thing in the area immediately below the ram's horn is the thalamus. So this area here is the thalamus. Okay, that's the sensory relay portion of your brain. Located below and in front of the thalamus is the hypothalamus. Once you've found the thalamus, the hypothalamus is located below it is this area right here.
And this is the part of your body that monitors things like hunger, thirst, how tired you are. Now that we've learned about how, oops, now that we've learned about all the different parts of the brain, let's talk a little bit about the spinal cord. What your spinal cord is, is a thick bundle of nerve axons. You guys all remember what the nerve axon looks like? It's that long section of a nerve cell that can, excuse me, that connect the brain to the rest of the body. And in a little bit, we're going to talk about a reflex. And a reflex is a quick automatic response, which is controlled by the spinal cord. Okay? So your spinal cord essentially has two jobs. First, it sends information from other parts of your body to your brain and then it mediates the reflexes. So when we talk about reflexes, reflexes don't go to your brain. They just go straight from the spinal cord. Before we can go into the details about reflexes, you need to understand what the peripheral nervous system is. And we've talked about the central nervous system. That's the, your brain and your spinal cord. The peripheral nervous system is all nerves, in all cells located outside of the spinal cord. We divide it into two groups, the somatic nervous system. This is the um, voluntary nervous system. It's the one that helps you control your skeletal muscles and allows you to move. So when you, say, bend your hand into a fist, that's an example of the somatic nervous system. The autonomic nervous system then controls your involuntary re responses. So for example, as you eat something and you swallow it and it moves down your throat into your stomach, those muscles are controlled by your autonomic nervous system. The last thing for today is we're going to talk about the five parts of a reflex arc. Um, and we'll talk in more detail about what each of these are as we do our, um, our reflex analysis. The first part of a reflex arc is your sensory receptor. For example, the receptors in your finger. And this takes in a stimulus. So let's say I put my finger on something that is hot. The sensory receptor sends, receives the information that the surface my finger is on is hot. The sensory receptor then connects to the sensory neuron. And the sensory neuron relays the impulse to the spinal cord. So the impulse that it got from the sensory receptor goes to the sensory neuron which sends an impulse up to my spinal cord, which is saying my finger is hot. Now this next part, the inner neuron, is actually in the spinal cord. So to protect my finger, I'm, the reflex isn't going to send the information all the way to my brain. It's just going to send the information to my spinal cord, where the motor neuron relay, or I'm sorry, where the inner neuron relays the impulse to the motor neuron. In this case, it's going to be, since my finger is hot, my body needs to pull my finger away from whatever is hot. So the inner neuron relays the impulse to a motor neuron. A motor neuron carries the impulse to the muscle, let's say in this case my bicep, and it ends with the effector, the muscle that moves the bicep jerking back. So this is how, if you've ever noticed when you, say, step on something um, that's sharp or burn a finger, um, you can jerk back away from the painful stimulus before you even realize anything's wrong. Okay. And we'll discuss more about this as we do um, our reaction time information. I hope this has helped clarify some things for you. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me during normal school hours. Have a great night.